There is a widely held belief today that it is through modern education that we're going to raise people out of poverty. But if we look honestly at what's been happening, we'll see that it's the advent of colonialism, development and aid that have created poverty. In the pre-modern or pre-development uh, systems and economies, you will not find the kind of poverty that you do in the modern slums of Calcutta and Mexico City, Beijing. Today, in most traditional villages, whether it be in China, India or Africa, people are led to believe that the future is this modern urban consumer culture. And they are going into debt. They are selling their houses to give their child an education. The great hope is that they're going to get a good job as an engineer, as a doctor in the modern economy. Less than 10% are succeeding. 90% end up failures. They might get a job as a, as a servant or as a car mechanic, but it is not the glorious life that people had hoped for. Most of the students of the dark, they don't do very well. Amongst 10, two will be good, more than good. But about the eight, they won't be better. The government in the last <laughs> top matter of Pasani, they need to go to our path, money, Sembas, Pomit Candy. They need to go to our money, but the strong gents of the city. One of the things that's most disturbing to me at a level of actually uh, justice and morality is that you have an institution that is in place globally that is branding millions and millions and millions of innocent people as failures. Very brilliant, wonderful, talented kinds of people are always introducing themselves in India to me. Oh, I'm a eighth class fail or I'm a tenth class fail. That's their introduction. What's amazing is that you know people who are claiming to be concerned with social justice cannot see the huge kind of social hierarchy and inequity that is created through education, modern education. It's mind-boggling for me how people don't see that. The other thing is a loss in terms of the kind of richness of imagination and cultural resources that, that people could bring because I think those who are branded as failures actually have a wide variety of capacity to think in different ways. And that, that is all being suppressed and lost. And so people who can only think in a very fragmented, you know, one-dimensional kind of way, those people are getting rewarded. Anybody who claims to be concerned with social justice need to have a serious conversation around that. I come from the central Himalayan region, of, which is called Garhwal. And the women of Garhwal worked very hard to uh, make sure their kids would have schooling. But of course, the schooling was the institutionalized schooling of the kind that doesn't teach you anything about your local ecology, your local culture, your local economy, or your ability to be productive. It basically teaches you to be a semi-literate for another system to which you have no entry because you don't belong to the right class, you don't belong to the right privilege, etc. I now go back to those same villages and the women said the worst mistake they made was to think that that kind of education would help. That we have a saying in, in Hindi, dhobi ka kutta na ghar ka na ghat ka, that you know, it's, it's the washerman's dog who does, belongs neither to the place where the washing is done nor to the home. That they're in between people and they're falling through the cracks of an in-between world. <laughs>
It is so sad to see how many Westerners come out to remote, relatively sustainable, relatively intact economies and cultures and fall in love with the place. They, they want to stay, they want to come back. They love the people. They find the people incredibly happy, incredibly kind, incredibly helpful. And then they want to help develop, bring in Western schooling to improve the lives of these people. Well, my name is Heidi. I, I come from Germany, from the southern part, that's Bavaria. And as I live in Bavaria, I'm keen on mountaineering. And that was the reason why, of course, I wanted to go to the Himalayas. And as I was a teacher, I was teaching English, German, ethics, that's a kind of religion. Uh, I was interested in schools, and so I happened to meet London School here. And of course, I, I got so much from the people here, from their re religious belief, from their mentality, um, the way of compassion, tolerance, uh, that I thought, well, I must do something for this school. <laughs> step by step, I tried to find sponsors, I tried to collect money. For instance, I am proud, over there there is a hostel, for a girls' hostel for 100 pupils, and this is mainly done, built by the money I could collect. <laughs> Here is a list of possible reasons why one uses a mirror. First, to check one's appearance. To check one's appearance. Yeah. Do you do that? Yeah. Yeah. Mirror for checking. And to look beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. To check appearance. Yeah? Do you, you check appearance. Check appearance, not only to see how you look, but also how you how you are dressed up, okay? Right? How you are dressed up. So you do that, okay? Right. And then to look beautiful. How much important is it? Vanity. Beauty. Everybody cares for their looks, okay? Like everybody cares for their looks, you know, how you look, right? How you how you look. It's very important. Uh, even if they stay here for one or two years and sometimes they are have to go back, forced by their parents to work in the fields, to look after younger children, they gain something for their life. Uh, some go to military forces, then they are good tradesmen, they open shops and sell all those necklaces and sweaters and these things. Or they learn special jobs and now mainly, as I know and as I hope, in computer techniques. So they go to India and have a good chance. So I think um, they have overcome real poverty here and uh, some people say, well, why don't you go to Congo or so, but I think uh, they still need help. It's not only to throw them into the water and then let them swim. They need, they need everything, from clothing uh, to mental um, aid. For if we are to fit and train such children for the future, they cannot be left as they are. And in spite of himself, the native must be helped. the number of really well-intentioned people who are trying to help other people with this package of schooling and aid, I really don't think that there's any bad intention behind that. I think it's purely out of good-heartedness and, and a will to help other people. It's just that they don't connect the dots. They don't often stay long enough to really look at the overall impact. 